every time that I uh, prepare for this message, uh, I get it in my heart that this is for a specific somebody, that somebody needs to hear this. I don't know if it's anybody here. I don't know if it's anybody listening online, but, um, but this is for somebody needs to hear this. And I just get this over and over in my spirit that the Lord is trying to reach this word and get this word to somebody. And so I don't know who you are, but uh, I am going to stand in faith. And I ask all you guys to stand in faith with me together that the Lord will reach this person. And that this message and the revelation of this message will reach that person, whoever that is, that needs to hear this message. And, uh, I, and once I get into it, you'll realize that it's, um, it, it's something that's very important. Uh, that we face some things in life uh, and uh, we, we come through some obstacles in life and uh, we need to know how to deal with them. Amen. I mean, so, uh, so I don't know who it is. And so we're just going to believe together, right? Amen. You stand with me in agreement that whoever needs to hear this will get that revelation and will get set free and the Lord will be able to deliver them for whatever it is, that bondage that they're holding on or is holding on to them. Amen. And that the truth will set them free. Amen. 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 So we're going to be going through a lot of scripture today because uh, I believe the Lord is trying to set a root and a foundation in somebody and that that root uh, has to be the word of God. And so we know, only thing that we know what is true is through the word of God. It's through rightly dividing the word of truth. And so this is God's written word to us so that we would know and that we may believe the truth. Right? Amen. So, uh, so that has to be the foundation of everything that you believe is that the word of God is the very core. It is the very center. It is the very source of everything you believe. If you don't have that squared away, you are going to struggle and you're going to have problems. And so when we begin to believe that the word of God is the solid foundation truth, then we will begin to experience the release and the freedom that the word of God provides. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, so let's go ahead and let's dig into Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. And uh, we're going to be reading portions of scripture. Like I said, we're setting a foundation. We're setting a foundation of the word of God. And so we're going to be reading um, some lo- lengthy parts of scripture. So it's going to be hard to put it on screen, but I put it up there anyway. Uh, so we can, uh, hopefully we can, we can get this. Uh, well, well, I'm saying it by faith. We're going to get through this perfectly. And the Lord's going to get and reach who he's trying to reach. Amen. So heaven's authority. From Daniel chapter 2, here in verse 31. And we're going to read uh, verse 31 down to verse 35. So just to give you a little bit of history of what's going on here, here is Daniel. And uh, Daniel is in captivity in Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, who had uh, conquered Israel and had brought all the people, the Israelites, out of uh, Israel and had brought them over to Babylon with him. And Daniel was uh, one of the wise men that was appointed to King Nebuchadnezzar. And so he would counsel King Nebuchadnezzar every once in a while. And um, and so here, uh, and jumping into this story, is that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And uh, he didn't know how the, he asked all his wise men to come together and, uh, and to help him interpret this dream. But this time, uh, he told his advisors that not only do I want you to, not only do I want you to interpret this dream, but I want you to tell me what the dream was. And so, you know, all his wise men began to freak out. It's like, how can we know that? There's nobody that can do that. And so, uh, and so ne- King Nebuchadnezzar didn't like that answer, and so he started killing all his wise men. So he said, you know, he started lynching them all off. And, uh, and so Daniel heard about this, and then uh, uh, Daniel took this to the Lord, and, uh, and the Lord gave him what King Nebuch- the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar, the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, but also the interpretation of that dream. And so we'll start here in verse 31. Uh, Daniel 2 verse 31 and here says you O king are watching and behold a great image this great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome this image's head was of fine gold its chest and arms of silver and its belly of thighs of bronze its legs of iron its feet partly of iron and partly of clay you watched while a stone uh, washed while a stone was cut out with hands which struck the image on his feet of iron and clay that broke them in pieces and verse 35 it says then the iron the clay and the bronze and the silver 
and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. And the, wind, and the wind carried them away so that there was no trace of them was found. And the stone that stuck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So now we know from the, our, where we are today in, uh, in our place in history that God was given King Nebuchadnezzar a, a, a prophecy of what was to come. And as if we read in, uh, later on in Daniel's interpretation, which we're not going to do for the sake of time, uh, but we read that the actual uh, figure that he saw of the, all this iron and clay and gold was actually represented kingdoms. And that the kingdom and then the stone that was made without hands was going to come and was going to smash and was going to obliterate this statue. It was going to obliterate these kingdoms. And so we know that the stone represents Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was made without human hands, that he was made right through the virgin birth, that he came from God. And so this stone that came and it would smash these other kingdoms to uh, basically dust. This is chaff means like, like a hay. Chaff is like hay, kind of just the wind will blow it away. So it's basically dust or hay. And so he would basically utterly destroy them. And then here we see at the bottom in the last of this verse, he says, and, and the stone became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, when we read mountain in prophecy, mountain represents kingdom. It's a, a kingdom. And so this stone would have a great kingdom that would fill the whole earth. Amen. And so we know that the church and Jesus Christ and the church is that kingdom. Amen. It's that kingdom of God that filled the whole earth. Amen. So this, is, this prophecy has been fulfilled and we have seen it fulfilled in our day today, even though this was written 600 years before Jesus Christ ever appeared. Amen. Hallelujah. That's amazing. And if you ever get a chance to, to study the book of Daniel, I encourage you to do it. It'll blow you away. I mean, he was prophesying the name of kings before the kings actually came. And so uh, it's really uh, astonishing. Now, he also pro prophesied the time of the coming of the Messiah, uh, which is really amazing, down to the day. All right. Amen. So anyway, <clears throat> so what it is that we want to take, take out of this is that there is to be a kingdom. There is a kingdom with authority and power that no other kingdom can stand against. And we know that that kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, right? And so that this, and we see today in this world, and we can definitely see it in our nation today, that there are spiritual influences on Congress, presidents, parliaments, all those other, and all around the world, that there are spiritual influences influencing the leaders of our nations. And so what this is saying is that Jesus Christ has come to destroy and completely obliterate that authority. Amen. And so that authority, this kingdom, this kingdom of God that comes down is to destroy the spiritual influences of the nations today. Amen. So we're, obviously the question is, well, why aren't we seeing the change? Why don't we see these things happening? And there's a reason why. There's a reason why. But... <clears throat> But uh, I, I don't want to get into that today. I'm trying to stay on track here because uh, I know we, we have a, a, something we've got to accomplish here. So, so we see Jesus Christ coming. And we see Jesus Christ in, over in the New Testament. We, we see him coming with all the authority and all the power and all the grace of the kingdom of God. Amen. We see him uh, healing. Right. We see him setting people free. We see them delivering people from uh, demonic oppression. We see him healing sicknesses and disease. We, heal him, uh, uh, we see him uh, doing whatever he can to do good. Acts 10, 28 says that he was full of the Holy, Holy Spirit to do good, to do good and setting people free and delivering people from the bondage of the devil. Amen. And so we look at here in um, Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19. And this is, if you ever wonder what the ministry of Jesus Christ was all about, we find it here. Right here. This is, this is what Jesus Christ was anointed to do. This is what Jesus Christ had all the authority and the power of heaven, of the kingdom of God, of the throne of God. He brought it to the earth. And at this, uh, so this authority, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the, to the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind. 
and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. So why is this important? And why are we going through this? It's because when we go through this life, we face challenges. We face tribulations. We face tests and we face trials. We are going to go through some things. Amen. Now, now notice I did not say our whole, our whole life was going to be a tribulation or a trial, but that as we go through life, we will face some things. And, and here in John 16, verse uh, 33, Jesus Christ says this. He says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Thank God he didn't stop there. Amen. He says, be, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. So basically what Jesus Christ is saying here is that there is nothing in this life that you will face. No hardship, no tribulation, no devil, no sickness and disease, nothing in this life that we will face that he has not already overcome. Amen. That he has not already overcome through the authority of of heaven through the authority and power of the kingdom of God from the throne of God there is nothing in this life that he has not delivered us from amen amen, amen. because he has overcome we have overcome and so we're going to talk about that today we're going to kind of plant some seeds here that this uh this has to be a reality in our lives that uh, that we you know we can always there's always that temptation to fear the unknown to fear what could happen to us or what may happen to us. And it can actually become a bondage. And so we don't want, to, so we want to be free from that bondage. And we want to live a life full of joy, right? We want to live a life full of peace. We want to live a life full of the, the things of God, amen? And so that we know and we can rest assured that whenever I run into a problem, whenever I come across something, I have the victory over it. Amen. Amen. So if you're running into a sick, sickness and disease, I have the victory over it. If we run into the devil, if the devil is harassing us, praise God, I have victory over him. Amen? Amen. And whatever running into whatever it is we face, I have the victory because Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I'm, again, I'm, I'm following a, a, a pattern here, so it's not quite as normal. Um, <clears throat> and, so, uh, and so today we're going we're gonna to kind of go back and we're going to discover or we're going to remind ourselves what Jesus Christ has done through his power and through his authority, through his death, resurrection, right? And through his power and his authority. What has he accomplished? What has he done? Because we have to know this if we're going to stand in it. We have to know it if we're going to walk in it, right? So we can't just say, yeah, whoopee, I have the victory. <laughs> no, really, it's, it's true you have the victory, but you got to know. Amen. You got to know it. And if we got to know it, then we can end the walk in that victory. Amen. Praise God. So basically, uh, so what Jesus Christ has done, I'm just breaking this down into two separate things, is that Jesus Christ came with the authority and power of the heaven and the throne of God. He came to set us free. He came to set us free, and he came to empower us, to empower us. Uh, <clears throat> so here, uh, and so he set us free so that these things, these tribulations, these challenges, these things that we face in life, he set us free so that they would not have dominion over us. So that we would not be subject to them, but that we would have a way of escape. Amen. So that is why he set us free. Also, he empowered us. Uh, uh, so I like to say it like this, that he empowered us so that we were able to walk on the water, per se, quote unquote, walk on the water of the problems of life. So when, when these things come, we are empowered to walk above them. Right. So they are under our feet. The tribulation, the trials, the devil, the sickness and disease, all those things, they're under our feet. And we can, he has empowered us to be elevated up above them and walk on top of them. So while we go through them, you know, we, we, are the, you know, we are walking on top, right? We are walking on top. And we just step right over it, and then we keep on going. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if we're going to walk on the water, then we need to hear the word of God. Amen. Because walking on the water requires faith, right? You know, it requires faith to walk on the water, right? So, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Without a word of God, you can have no faith. So we got to hear what the word says about this. And uh, I want to encourage uh, whoever this is for. I want to encourage you to 
absorb this. Uh, get this into your spirit. Hear it over and over and over and over and over again. Because the more you hear it, the more confident you become in the word of God. The more you hear it, the more confident that, that the authority uh, and, the, and the power of the kingdom of heaven and the throne of God, the heaven's authority, will work in your life. Amen. It's not just a fairy tale. Hallelujah. We're talking about truth. And it will work. And it will set you free. Amen. So whatever it is you're struggling with, it doesn't matter what you're struggling with. Jesus Christ has overcome it because he's overcome the world. Amen. So let's, let's, go, let's get into this here. All right. First of all, we said that Jesus set us free. So what are some things that Jesus Christ has set us free from? First one, obviously, sin. He has set us free from sin, that we would not be slaves to sin. Here, Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And we covered this last week. We talked about uh, God's law of forgiveness and that how God has completely removed, right? Jesus had completely removed sin from us. He set us free. He cleansed us. He washed us. He forgave us, right? He completely ripped that sin out from us and removed it from us as far as the east is from the west. Remember we talked about that last week? And, uh, and that he has completely set us free from sin. So that sin should no longer have any dominion or any effect on you or your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ has set us free from sin. Second thing that Jesus Christ has set us free from is sickness and disease. And we see here 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. Now, I know there's a lot of people that, uh, that don't believe that, uh, that God heals today. And uh, I can only, I, there's nothing that I can say to convince you. All I can say is get with the Holy Spirit. Ask him to show you, are you really still healing today? Is this still your word? Is this still your promise? Are you still making this provision today that you did 2,000 years ago when you walked this earth? Because healing was a major part of Jesus' ministry. He went about healing all, multitudes, multitudes, amen? And so his ministry is still in effect today. Nothing in Jesus' ministry has ended. It has continued, amen? It has gotten greater. It has gotten better. It, but now he's able to reach more people. Amen? So, his, uh, so healing is a, a, a part of the, uh, the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection as part of the, the uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, as part of the accomplishment at Calvary, I guess you could say it that way. Uh, you know, the redemption was accomplished at Calvary, at the cross. And so healing and sickness and disease, healing from those things, was also accomplished at the cross. Amen. Praise God. All right, in Galatians 3.13, Jesus Christ has set us free from the curse of the law. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Amen. Now, the curse of the law, you can find that out in Deut uh, Deuteronomy 28. If you want to go there and take a look at that, uh, there's a lot of bad things listed there. And you say, thank God for, you know, we're redeemed from those things. Amen. And that also includes sickness and disease. It also includes poverty and lack and not having enough. Um, you, know, you, you know, sometimes in your life, you may notice that uh, I, all of a sudden I have all these bills. You know, it's every time, it seems like every month, like clockwork, I get a bill. And uh, it sets me behind on my income and, uh, you know, it eats up all my income or something just breaks down or something, you know, it just happens every month and it happens all the time. Well, that's part of the curse. Uh, anything that would steal, kill and destroy is part of the curse. And Jesus Christ has redeemed you from that curse. Amen. So you can take authority over that thing. Amen. And uh, and uh, close those doors where those doors need to be closed. All right. And so the last thing here, and I think this is where the Lord is putting an emphasis on is that we have, he has rescued us, uh, he has delivered us, he has freed us from the dominion of the devil. From the dominion of the devil. Here I like this, uh, Colossians 1.13. I like the Holman Christian Standard Bible version of this verse. Uh, it says, he has rescued us. Now most translations read, he has delivered us. But he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the son he loves. And I like this verse because I like this word rescue, because every time I see this word rescue, I think of uh, I picture myself you know, or picture yourself out in the, in the ocean. Right. And uh, you, you had a yacht 
and their yacht sank and it broke apart. And so you're just hanging on to a drift board, right? And so you're just kind of out there hanging you know, in the ocean and the storm's coming and the waves and the wind and the lightning, you know, everything is coming, all the darkness of the storm's coming upon you. And you're just kind of sitting out there, right? You're subject to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the authority of that storm. There's nothing you can do about it. And you can just sit there. All you can do is sit there and hope that you, you know, ride it out. You know, hopefully, hope to God that I can get through this, right? Hope to God that I'll survive this. But as you're out there, here comes the helicopter, right? Here comes the Coast Guard, right? And here comes the helicopter, flies up above you. And what, what do they do, right? They get a guy that jumps out of the helicopter, right? He puts his uh, harness on, jumps out of the helicopter, gets down in the water with you, right? He gets down there with you. He latches you to himself, right? And then he begins to lift you up out, right? He lifts you up out of that sea and he lifts you up into the helicopter. And then what do they do? They take you and they transfer you. They transfer you away, right? They take you out from under the authority of that storm. They take you out from the authority of all those things, of the, the, the dominion, and, you know, you go to land. And uh, maybe it's sunny on land, and when you get off the helicopter, uh, you kind of you know that relief, that rest. You're like, wow, yeah, I'm safe. And maybe even lay down, you know, <laughs> lay on the ground and think, kiss the ground. But, um, but that's what I think of rescued, rescued. He rescued us. And so he, Jesus saw us in our turmoil. He saw us that we were subject to, you know, we were subject to the, to the things and the forces of evil, the, the powers and the dominion of the devil. There was nothing we could do about it. All we could do was just hang on and hope that we could get through it. But Jesus Christ came and he rescued us. He came down and he dropped down in the earth together with us. He got down in the muck and the mire together with us, latched himself, latched us to himself, right? And he raised us up and he lifted us up out from under that authority and out from under that power. And he what? Transferred us. He delivered us. He took us out and away from that authority and the power of the devil. And now we are in the kingdom of the son of his love. Amen. So that's how I like to picture it, that we've been completely lifted up out from the dominion of the devil and transferred away and transferred away to another place. Amen. So we don't have the devil doesn't have any authority over us. He doesn't have any power over us. He doesn't have any dominion over us because we have been rescued. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that. I love that. Praise God. So not only did Jesus Christ come to rescue us, but he did more than that. I love Jesus. I and mean, there's just so much he did. Amen. First John 3, 8, the one who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Is the devil operating in your life? He came to destroy it. He came to obliterate it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not done, uh, this is also said in Hebrews 2, verse 14, it says, inasmuch as they, the children, have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy, destroy him who had the power, I like that word had, had the power of death, that is, the devil. He destroyed the devil. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. This is why we got to get it in our spirits. Because I think that person, and, this, and, uh, and I'm, I'm I'm taking a guess here, but I'm following my spirit that this person is dealing with some spiritual influences. Uh, they're dealing with some some uh, darkness. They're demon with a, They're dealing with a, a demon or a devil or I don't know what it is. But God wants you to know that He has not left you alone to deal with that thing on your own. He has. He wants you to know His word that He has set you free, that He has rescued you from that thing, and that you don't have to tolerate it. Amen. And there's something that you can do about it also. I'm going to get into that in a second. But here in Colossians 2, verse 15, it says, When he, Jesus Christ, had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. Notice that word disarmed. Disarmed. Amen. He made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives uh, uh, in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross through the cross. Amen. So this brings us to our second point that not only did Jesus rescue us, but Jesus empowered us. He empowered us. He gave us dominion over the devil. He gave us authority over the devil. He gave us heaven's authority. The, the same authority that Jesus Christ operated in, the same authority that came from the throne of God, the same authority Jesus Christ has given to you 
He's given it to you and he's tell, authorized you to tell that devil, or to tell that sickness and disease, to tell whatever it is that is hindering that problem, that trial, the tribulation. He's, telling, he's given you that authority to speak to it. Amen. And that same authority will work on your behalf just like it did on Jesus' behalf. Amen. And I like, I'm going to do this. I like how a, a minister did this. I saw a minister do this. I thought it was great. And uh, he had a, a dollar bill. And, uh, you know, he's, and he just said, you know, it says this dollar bill, right, it has a certain amount of purchasing power, right? It has a limited purchasing power. And uh, it has a certain, uh, because it's a dollar bill, it, you know, it's, it has a limited type of authority, right? So if I was to take this dollar, and let's say I was going to give it to Jeff, right? If I was going to give it to Jeff, did that dollar lose any of its purchasing power? No. Did that dollar lose any of its authority behind it? No, because the, the power that is behind that dollar is not, is not invested in me, but it's invested in, the, you know, it's invested in the power behind it. And so that's what Jesus did when he gave us his authority. He handed us his authority. And, it's not the, the, and his authority didn't lose any value. His authority didn't lose any power when he gave it to us because it's not up to us. It's up to the force and the power behind the name of Jesus. Amen. And so when we use the name of Jesus, it's the same th heavenly throne uh, authority that he had. It's the same thing. There is no difference. There is no difference. Amen. And like I said, you've got to get this in your spirit. Uh, um, or you'll just be playing games. So, amen. Praise God. All right. We're almost through. We're almost through. Amen. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at what Jesus has accomplished. Again, we're, we, are, uh, um, we are setting a foundation. Right? We're, we're getting, we're sowing the seed of the word of God. So that when we hear these things, and we hear these things, and we hear these things, then our faith and our confidence builds and then the manifestation of these things come after amen all right so here in uh, matthew 28 18 here's jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth in heaven and on earth all authority so just like jesus christ was given jesus christ was given this authority and he was able to operate in it so we too have been given this authority and are able to operate in it. Amen. So here we're going to go ahead and look at Ephesians 1, verse 19, verse 20. And let's look at what Jesus did, or what God did through Jesus Christ that actually put us in this place of authority. So, because we, when we face the devil, the devil's going to give you every excuse in the book. Right? He's going to give every, you know, every, every opportunity. He's going to give you to doubt the word of God and doubt what God has done. But if you're armed with the word of God, then you know how to respond. And you can know how to, um, uh, you know, counter his lies. And we always counter his lies with the word of God. Amen. Ephesians 1, verse 19 and verse 20. Uh, we'll go ahead and we're just going to read a little bit here. And it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked the Father in Christ Jesus? He raised him, Jesus, from the dead, and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above. I love that word far. I was actually reading this one day. I was hearing uh, a Kenneth Copeland scripture. Uh, Kenneth Copeland was, was preaching on this scripture. And uh, I heard on the inside of me and said, that word far is not just, not just far. It's far. It is far above. Far, far, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the which is to come. So, hallelujah. So, what God had done, God had elevated Jesus to his own right hand. And I, for the longest time, I struggled. What does that mean at my own right hand? Well, that means simply a seat of authority. A seat of authority. And the, and the best uh, illustration that I can think of is uh, you look back uh, and look at the story of Pharaoh and Joseph. You guys remember that story? Uh, Pharaoh and Joseph, where uh, Joseph, you know... Uh, Revealed, God revealed to him that was going to happen. He uh, uh, revealed to Pharaoh what was going to happen. Joseph interpreted. And then Pharaoh elevated Joseph, right? He put Joseph at, uh, he gave Joseph authority over the whole land, 
right? And so there was nobody that was going to be above Joseph except for Pharaoh himself, right? And so that is, but he gave Joseph authority over everything, over all of Egypt. And so that is sitting at the right hand. That's what it means, that God has given all his authority and he's given it to Jesus. And he gave Jesus you know, all authority over all heaven and earth. Uh, but he has uh, uh, given him that authority. And so now he rules, right? He, he, is, he is the ruler, reigner of the kingdom and the domain. Amen. And so we also read in scriptures that there will come a time when Jesus will hand that authority back to the father. Right? Once all his enemies are made a footstool, Jesus will hand that authority back. But here we see that, father ha- that the Father has elevated Jesus and seated him at the right hand. Hallelujah. Far above these principalities, far above these evil spirits, far above these influences. Amen. Now, uh, uh, oh, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. Now I love this part. Ephesians 2, 5. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great, with, uh, great love with which he loved us, he, uh, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and here we go, Ephesians 2, 6, and raised us up together, raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God has elevated us with Christ, and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Again, we are seated in that place of authority. It is a place of authority, and this is where Jesus has given us his authority. And there's only one authority. It's the heaven's authority. It's the kingdom of God's authority. It's the throne of God's authority. We have just been authorized to be able to use it. Amen. And so I'm... um, I want to make a difference here, uh, a distinction between authority and power. Okay, they're not the same thing. Authority, when we, we God has given us the authority to speak the name of Jesus, but it, the power is God's. So we are not trying to form something inside of ourselves to make something happen. We are not resisting what we're trying, some kind of build some kind of power within us and try to and try to use that. But no, we are to use the authority. And the power and the throne of God will back you up. It will back you up. Amen. Because it's his authority. It's his power. Amen. And you're still doubting that God has given you authority and power? Well, well, the Bible plainly says it. (laughs) So, amen. It says, Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, Jesus Christ, I give you the authority to trample on uh, serpents, snakes, and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. All the power of the enemy. Amen. So we see Jesus has freed us. He has empowered us. That whatever those trials and tribulations and the things that come against us, he has empowered us to overcome them. He has set us free from their influence so, they should not, so that we should not be in subjection to them. And then he has given us the power to speak to them. Amen. That we could speak to them in the name of Jesus and those things will be broken and those things will be destroyed and we can walk on top. We can walk on top. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just almost through here. Mark 16. Uh, he said, uh, here is also another scripture that Jesus Christ has given us the authority. It says, he said to his, uh, to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. 17, 18, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons, right? So these are the believing ones, right? So we're not talking about, you know, a, a certain group of people. Because some people say that only the disciples had that authority. Only certain select people had that authority. Now, he says, right, he who believes and is baptized will be saved and does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. That's the church, right? The church believes. They will speak new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we see the authority was made. Uh, I already talked about that. Uh, But you see the authority was given so that no sickness and disease 
I'm saying it again, that no devil, no power of the devil should have any influence on your life. Right? The real Jesus Christ came to set us completely free. And so if you're dealing with something like that, uh, I, I recommend uh, get a message like this one. Uh, Kenneth Hagan also has a message called The Believer's Authority. The Believer's Authority by Kenneth E. Hagan. And uh, there's three parts. There's part one and part two and part three. They're all free and they're all on YouTube. And uh, I would highly recommend, highly recommend that you watch those and devour them. Listen to them over and over and over and over again. Because you find out on that day, when that, you know, when you come, the, the time of tribulation or trial comes, that you're ready. You're ready. You're equipped. And when that devil sticks up his face in your life, you don't cower in fear. You're full of boldness. You're full of uh, the glory. You're full of faith. And you say, before, and I've been, man, I've, I've done this before. It's like, before I even get the chance to say, get out of here, devil, or in the name of Jesus, before I even get to say it, you can see he's just gone. Like, because it's so built up in you. And you're just like, ah, and he's gone. Like, I don't want to hear it, you know. So, um, so you can, so you, it really does. It takes a spiritual strength to resist the devil. I'm just going to say that. It does. It does. And, uh, and if you're ready and you're prepared, it won't be a big deal, right? But if you, if you neglect the spiritual feeding, it's going to be a struggle. And it's going to be a battle. Amen. So, so uh, that's why we're going through this and we're covering this just to plant some seeds. Um, and again, I would encourage you to, to, to keep feeding yourself on this and, uh, and just be prepared. Be prepared. It's, it, it, it's, there's no reason in the world that a Christian should be afraid of the devil. Not actually, not one. Not one reason. Because what have God has done, he has completely delivered us from any authority, any power, any of his acts, anything that he, the devil tries to do. We've been set free from it. Amen. So we don't have to tolerate it. We don't tolerate it. And, uh, and the only authority that the devil has in your life is the authority that you give him. That's it. That's it. Otherwise, he, if you cut that thing off and you know the word of God, you just cut him off. Right, right, right when he appears, you just cut him right off. Right, You just stop. That's it. You're out of here. You have no authority here. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, I'm believing that uh, whoever needed to hear this, uh, amen, that the, the Holy Spirit is going to take these words and uh, will reveal to them uh, what they need to hear. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you just for uh, your word, Father. That is your word. Your word is the truth that sets free. And, uh, and Father, we just stand in agreement with that person, whoever it may be. Father, we just stand in agreement that uh, that, that devil, or whatever it is they're dealing with, is broken in Jesus' name. By the authority and the power from the throne of God, by the authority and power of Jesus Christ given to us, we take authority over that thing. And devil, we command you to leave and loose that and lot person alone. You may cease, you cease and desist in your operation and be gone in Jesus' name. You have no place and no authority. And we thank you, Father, for the ministry of your Holy Spirit to encourage the heart of whoever is dealing with this thing. And we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, praise God. I know that was a little bit different, a little bit rougher than normal, but uh, it had to be done. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next week. And hopefully we'll be outside again and uh, enjoy the nice, nice weather. So, amen. Amen. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, praise God. Thank you, guys.